You know what you're getting. Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helovician octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I, I do not! That's not what I mean! Then pray tell, what do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest. Big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... Shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third ballard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Aizen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom.
If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. What? That crow just flew off with the coin! Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow! Don't sweat it! I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. I don't believe it! Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air! Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. You gotta be kidding me! Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim, and he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there, but it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then, finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the Reaper's curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth Affinity and my Reaper's Curse aren't much different, and that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Huh. So, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh, huh. Hey, Aizen, is there, uh, anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt? What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning, 
and asking Grocky all nice like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> this is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey! Don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me?! Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sensed Give that... Tabitha our thanks. It's looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible. But at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. This is everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? 
Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours, and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yeah! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh, well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. Scout ship departing. The Eastern Plain is finally open for travel. I hear that the people of Stoneberry are alive and well. My husband and I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I wasn't worried about him at all. He talks tough, but he was really worried. Oh, sorry you don't know who we're talking about. It's his apprentice. What kind of apprentice? My husband's an architect. Even the royal family and the Abbey commission his work. He's been at the docks here on a job. He just finished and we're about to return to Logris. These people don't care about all that. Why did your apprentice go to Stonebury? He's young and talented, but a bit eccentric. He said he wanted to help create a new town, so he set off to the frontier. A craftsman has to focus on his work. Creating a new town, ha! He should know his place. But my husband didn't disown him. That boy's fearlessness reminds me of my husband when he was young. So you understand how he feels then? I didn't say that. If he thinks he has the talent, he's free to do as he likes. But if he doesn't follow through with it to the end, I'll be done with him. Did you hear that? He thinks the boy can do it. If you ever find yourself in Stonebury, go visit that boy's workshop. <laughs> right. I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry about my husband. He can be a real grump. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty used to people like that. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I'm so happy things have been peaceful around the capital. I can come to the harbor to shop without fear. I heard that those demons that made a mess of the palace have been wrecking towns all over, though. But Shepherd Artorius and the fine folks at the Abbey are on the job. I bet those demons are quaking in their britches. Let's hope that's the case. Of course it is. Lord Artorius is incredible. The demons have been mostly cleared from the area around the capital. Your love for the Abbey and the Shepherd are great and all, but I'd keep it down. If you keep poking around the bushes, you might catch yourself a snake. Uh, a snake? There's a rage-crazed girl out there who hates the Abbey. She's a real viper, that one. She sounds awful. That's what I hear. Who are you calling a viper?
gotten used to it. Used to what? Your powers. I think I finally got a handle on them in a way that feels right. That's good. Hopefully you won't faint anymore. Yeah, and I'll keep learning too. I hope we can make this work out. Yeah, definitely. Fingers crossed. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. Hey! When you and Eleanor made your pact together, she gave you a true name, right? Was it a good one? Uh... True name? What's that? It's a special name in the ancient tongue given to a Moloch as a necessary step in forming a pact with a human. I gave Bienfu the name Fushikas. It means thing. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. It's just my own little way of showing affection. So what kind of name did you get, Lafayette? I... Uh... What's the matter? She didn't give you a really weird name like Mogulu gave Bienfu, did she? If you're not happy with it, I can talk to Eleanor about it later. So go on and tell me... I'm fine with it. And I can't tell you anyway. Well, you don't have to get so worked up about it. A true name is not something a Amalek just casually divulges to others. They carry a special meaning to us. Speaking it to anyone other than our Pact Keeper carries a special meaning. Between comrades, it means we trust them with our lives. In other cases, it's... Practically a confession of love! You... could have said something sooner, you know. Laffy sets at a delicate age. You should be more careful in the future. Oh, really? It's just another way of showing affection. be the demon Tabitha wanted us to know about. It's flying free, but could it still be a Therian? I just felt an Earth Pulse point. It's that way, somewhere near the top of that mountain. Let's check it out. I can't wait to take a good look around. Whoa, now that's what I call a view. I agree that it's beautiful, but don't leap about so much. You'll fall. Hmm. I can sense many earth pulses under this place. I figured you'd notice that. An intricate web of earth pulses crisscrosses the land under the Aldina Plains. Mountains like these would normally take tens of thousands of years to form, but these popped up in about a millennia. So the earth pulses have affected the land? Exactly. Long ago, people wielded arts that allowed them to manipulate the Earth Pulses and control the very land itself. How could arts like that exist? Perhaps they pushed against key points on the Earth Pulses? Like how acupressure can improve a person's blood flow. That's a rather forced comparison. But you may be right. Either way, those arts have been lost for eons. I'm impressed, Aizen. You know a lot about everything. Not at all. There's so much I don't know. For example, the name of these flowers. That's why I travel. To learn. Aldina alabaster grass. That's the name of this flower? Yes. A long time ago, my brother showed me a picture of it in one of his books. They're fragile flowers. They die quickly on their own. But if enough of them gather together, they can survive. 
Fields of them form beautiful white carpets of flowers. In some cultures, they symbolize kinship. The bonds between people. Kinship? Huh. I'll remember that. You and your brother taught me something new today. I'll never forget either. No barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. The only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon? Alright, if I were a Bloodwing, where would I be? We'll start at the inn. It only makes sense. Raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, they all grow in abundance around Stonebury. We even have a fairy tale about it. One day the ground was covered with so many fallen berries, they all became stones. Stoneberries. Is that how the town got its name? The spelling has changed some, but yes. Berries are an important part of this village. We harvest local berries to make jams, pastries, gels, and all sorts of sweets. Berry-flavored gels! I've never had one. We've exported our jam and fruit for a while now, but our raspberry gels are still being perfected. Aw, oh, rats. Are the vegetables growing in that field special too? I don't think I've ever seen anything like them before. You've got sharp eyes. But that's right. They're a rare species of wild potato. They're red and they're called radish bells. We discovered them in the mountains nearby. Sadly, the potatoes are actually highly poisonous. Really? They look so good. They do. But the skin and the sprouts are toxic. If you aren't careful when removing them, it's poisonville for you. Deadly poison aside, they're sweet, fluffy, and go great with butter. And when they're fried nice and crispy, they're the best. So just skin them and sell them. What's the problem? Yes, we've thought of that, but the way they are now, you have to peel off quite a bit before you get to the edible part. Peel one as big as your fist, and all you get for your trouble is a bit of meat the size of an egg yolk. That's why we're selectively breeding them. One day, they'll have only a thin layer of poisonous skin. Why not breed them to get rid of the poison altogether? With no poison, bugs will eat them, and they'll be more vulnerable to cold and heat. With potatoes, as with people, getting rid of everything harmful isn't always for the best.